So this is the 10th lesson and we're looking at 2D angular projectile math. Um, we're going to shoot objects up or kick objects up at an angle from the horizontal and we're going to be able to break that into vertical and horizontal components. We'll see how we deal with those. And we're just going to use our knowledge to pick out some givens that um, may be assumed or, or may not be assumed. So you'll see how that's done in this lesson. First thing I wanted to remind you of is when you have a projectile launched, you have initial Y component and you have an X component. The X component, if you take a look at the blue arrow, it doesn't change throughout. So if I know the X at one place, for the sake of most of these problems, we're going to solve for it at the beginning. I know that's going to be the same X, the VX the whole time. Whereas the Y component is going to change throughout because it's accelerated by gravity downwards. At the top, you see that there's no velocity and at the bottom, it's the opposite of what it was initially upwards. And that's at the same height. So some assumptions that we're going to be making uh, Vx will be the same once we solve for it anywhere, and we're also going to be dealing with no air resistance. So in the future unit, we'll, we'll deal with air resistance, and we may change problems a little bit, but for this, this page, this, uh, this unit, we're not dealing with that. And then um, we are going to be able to make assumptions on, for Vfy for some problems, but not every problem. So you have to realize when you can make those assumptions. The first type, type of problem where you can make the assumption is if you're trying to get a, to the highest point. If you have to get to the highest point, the velocity at the top, the y-axis velocity is going to stop. So it might start with a VIY, but at the top, the highest point possible, we know it's going to be when Vfy is zero. So that's one assumption we'll see. The next assumption is going to be if we want to get the furthest downrange um, at the same at, at the same height. So we, we're trying to figure out how far downrange we're going to get, and it's going to land at the same height. We can make an assumption that the final velocity over here is going to be the same as the initial velocity, but we're going to use a negative because it's going to be going down. That being said, in a lot of these problems, we're going to be using gravity being negative 10 meters per second squared because we're going to have upward motion and we're going to have downward motion at the same time. Okay, so you really have to read the problem to, to make the assumptions. You'll see in one, on one of our last problems, we won't, uh, we, we won't be able to make an assumption. So um, just in general, you have your 1D motion equations, and you have specialized versions that can be used. It's really the same equations. If you're in a college class, you're not going to want to memorize extra problems. You won't be given an equation sheet. Um, but if you want to make some, uh, if you want to go ahead and make that your own equation sheet and have the specialized equations, um, you know you can you can do that. And all you're going to do is you're going to take any uh, any x-axis component x-axis x-axis v because you can only be in constant motion in the x-axis. And I just put a little x there to represent x-axis. In the same sense, with the y-axis right here, I went ahead and replaced a few things. I took um, a out, the A is out, so any place you see an A right there, you're going to have that replaced with a G. And that G, I could have just replaced it with 10 meters per second squared if all my problems were on Earth. Um, but some problems might not be on Earth. But for this unit, they will be. So G is going to be 10 meters per second squared down. And most, for most problems here, we're probably going to use a negative 10. Once again, there's up and down going on at the same time. We're going to want to say one's up and one's down. We'll usually say down is negative. Another thing is we replaced any x's over here with the uh, with the y's, and then we just added y's to all the initial and final velocities to represent that they're in the, the y-axis. So they're they're just the same equations as the ones over here. They're just specialized for specifically this unit or any unit that you're you're in free fall. In the y-axis here, we're in free fall during projectile motion. So make the check, double check, make sure your mode you should be in degrees right here. If you're in radians, you want to switch that over to two degrees. And if you don't have a graphing calculator, you're probably going to be in degrees already. And so let's look at the first type of problems. Before we can do a lot of these problems, we're going to have something like this. You have a cannonball shot at 60 meters per second, 20 degrees above the horizontal. So we're going to have to go ahead and make an overall, just a triangle. In this case, we're going to have 60 meters put on the hypotenuse, and we have an angle closest to the the origin, the, the starting point where it's coming out of. And then we're going to have to solve for our opposite, our, our vi, y, and vx. And here it's asking you for um, what's its initial component of velocity, the vx. So this is going to be the adjacent and hypotenuse. That's going to lead you to cosine. 
So you have your cosine, you throw in your angle, the 20, you throw in your 60, you're going to end up getting 56.4 meters per second. And then when you're trying to deal with the y-axis, now we're looking at the opposite in the hypotenuse. So we're going to go to, to sine. And so it's going to be the opposite or the VIY is going to be equal to the sine of 20 times that 60. When we get that answer, we're going to get 20.5. So this is information we're going to use for the rest of these problems. And we can actually start to populate a givens list. Before we are asked any problems, we know just off the bat that we have an x that's going to stay the same because we just solved for it, the 56.4 meters per second. We have an initial y-axis that's going to change, but it's initially going to be 20.5 meters per, per second up. Once again, it's going to be directed up. So since we're going to have gravity going down, we're going to have to say this is a negative. So we have to, we do have opposite directions. Since we have opposite directions, we're going to have to say something's positive, something's negative. For the sake of this, we're going to say negative gravity. So these are the givens for anything for, for these two parts. There's three and four. Both of them will have these givens, but then we can make assumption based on what they're asking for, um, landing at the same height or highest point. So let's look at three. For three, we're landing at the highest point. So we're trying to find out um, what is the sort We're trying to find out not landing at the highest point, but we're trying to find out what the highest point the cannonball will get. And if you think about it, at the very top right here, you have no velocity in the y-axis. There is an x component, it's staying the same the whole time, but we're looking at just the y-axis. So when I want to find out what the highest point it's going to get is going to be, I can use the assumption that the final velocity at that point is going to be upwards, it's going to be zero. So this problem is like saying you shoot something straight up 20.5 meters per second, it's accelerating downwards at 10, it gets to rest to its highest point, what is its y? And then that can lead us to your acceleration equations, and there's one equation that has all of these givens in it. And so that's the 1D, that's the, if you're looking at the 1D motion section, it's this. If you if you made an, a specialized form of it, it's exactly the same thing. This is just to be the specialized form. And so you can just plug in your values, zero squared equals 20.5 squared times two, plus two times negative 10. And so you're gonna get 428.25 minus 20, and we're going to have to, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add 20 Y to both sides. So we can't put the 420 with the negative 20. So we can't add these numbers together. The last students will do that. You can't because this is, this is minus 20 Y. So we're going to just add 20 Y's to both sides. So when we do plus 20 Y plus 20 Y, that gets rid of this. And we get 20 Y equals 420.25. Plug in our value, we, we do the math, we divide up the 20 now, we divide up the 20, divide up the 20, and we get y equals 21 meters. So that's how high this cannonball is going to reach up the ground. If I wanted to go ahead and write that in, the y would equal 21 meters upwards right at that point. Okay, so the next problem, how far downrange can the, does a cannonball land at the same height? So in this case, we're asked for the x, how far downrange. And we are now going to have a new assumption. At that point right there, the final velocity is equal to whatever the initial was, and we solved for that earlier, so 20.5 meters per second up. But now this is going to be negative 20.5 20 because this is going to be down. So now we're using positives to represent up and negatives to represent down. So that was a positive. I don't have to write in a positive, but that's what the up is. And so we're ready to solve for this. Um, we want to solve for time because we want to get that time because we need to put that time into the x-axis. But we can find, we have enough information here to find an equation with v, i, y, g, v, f, y, and t in it. And this is the, the unchanged, the unspecialized version. This is a specialized version. Once again, the same thing. We can start plugging in our values. We can rearrange it. And then when you rearrange it, let me go back and show you how I do this. I want to subtract V, I, Y from both sides. And once I do that, then I can divide out the G and I divide out the G. And so V, F, Y minus V, I, Y over G. And you'll see that's what I get right here. So V, F, Y minus V, I, Y over G. Don't forget that there's a negative. The V, F, Y is negative 20.5. And you're going to subtract another 20.5 from it because this, this was a positive value, but this negative sign is there, but this negative sign came from that value in the first place. So just watch out. You're pretty much adding the two numbers and dividing by 10. 
Um, so when you do that, the negatives will cancel out. So it'll be negative uh, four, 40, um, 41 divided by negative 10, so you get 4.1 seconds. So that's the time right here, but that's also the time that's going to go into our time in the x-axis. And now we can finish it off solving for x, plugging in our numbers, and then we get 231.2 meters as an answer for this problem right here. So let's get some more practice. This is the same sort of problem. You should pause the video and you should try it yourself if you're watching it at home. Um, and, then, and then just double check with my work to see if you got the answer right. So we're going to break this into its y component, well, initially to its x components, or, v, or vx. So it's going to be the adjacent side. We have our hypotenuse and our adjacent. That leads us to cosine. And so we plug in our values and you get a 27.2. That's going to be this right here. It's a good idea just to write it into your triangle so you can actually see it. But I have it on the next slide. And then we do, we're trying to find the opposite with our hypotenuse. So that's going to lead us to sine. And so sine 25 times that 30, that hypotenuse, that 30. And we're going to get 12.7. So that gives us our, our givens list for this section right here. And it's actually for both of these, this thing right here, we know that this is going to be the case for all problems. We know that this is going to be the initial velocity for all problems. We know that they're going to be in the air, so G is going to be negative 10. But depending on which one of these problems we're asked, we're going to have another assumption. Do we want to find maximum height or do we want to find, find out how far out landing at the same height? So in this one, we're looking for maximum height. So therefore, at maximum height, remember, we're trying to find maximum height when we're at this point right here. And at this point right here, the velocity is going to be zero in the y-axis. So once again, we're looking at the y-axis, not the x-axis, because it's going to stay the same the whole time. The x-axis, the blue arrow, doesn't change. And now we have enough information to go to this formula. Once again, our specialized version of it. We can plug, it, plug in our values. And just like before, with the math, you can't subtract 20 from 161.3 you uh, go ahead and add 20y to both sides. I get rid of that and now I get to this point and now I can divide out the now I can divide out the 20. When I divide out the 20 I'm going to get 8.1 meters. So this um, soccer ball is going to get 8.1 meters off the ground at that point. So if I want to find out how far, once again, we have to restart a new givens list every single time because we can't make the assumption that we made in the last one that VFY was zero. We have to we have a new assumption because we're trying to find out how far does it land at. So we're looking at all the way to the end where it lands. And where it lands, that final velocity is going to be equal to the initial velocity with the negative version of it. So it's going to land at the same um, Y component of velocity, but, but negative that because it's going to be going down at, the, at that point. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that to solve for t because we need to do something in this in this x-axis spot. We need to figure this x-axis out, and we know when it lands, it's also done going forward. So we can find t here, doing the equation like before. Once again, the non-specialized here's are specialized. We rearrange it a little bit or plug it in numbers and rearrange it. Either way, when you get to your final answer, you're going to get 2.54 seconds here. So that's going to be 2.54 seconds to reach the ground, to go up and reach the ground. And then it's also going to be 2.54 seconds to go up and down. The whole time it's going at a constant velocity of 27.2 meters per second. So that leads you to this equation. We plug in our values and we get 69.1 meters. So that's how far downrange the soccer ball would, would land if kicked at 30 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizon. So lastly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a problem where we're not going to be at the top. We're not going to land at the same height. We're just going to be um, asked, okay, 9 meters downrange. I don't know where the ball is 9 meters downrange, so the X is 9, nine meters away. I can't assume it's at the top. I can't assume it's, at, at, it's landed on the ground. So we're going to have to do a little bit more, and this question is asking you, it's telling you about a crossbar, and it's asking you how high above that crossbar are you going to be nine meters down range? So you're going to have to figure out how high you're going to be in the first place, and then you're going to subtract the 2.44, or or you're going to figure out what's going on. Um, you might be able to be below it, but you're going to subtract 2.44, and you're going to find out if you're above or below that crossbar. So starting from the same givens, because this is the same uh, all the way from 
from seven, I believe, was uh, was all the same. Givens had the soccer ball kick 30 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizon. But we had the same Givens. Once again, no assumptions made yet. In the previous problems, we could make the assumption. But in this problem, we can't. But what we do know uh, is that we want to find out nine meters downrange, you know, going at 27.2 uh, meters per second, how long is that going to take? And so um, our, our goal is to find why those, those were kind of coming in at the wrong times. But we have, we want to find out, so after nine meters, not, not after landing, not after getting back down here, not after getting at the, 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 the top, but nine meters down range, we want to find out how high we're going to be. So we're going to start in the x-axis. We know we can figure out how much time it takes to go 9 meters at 27.2 meters per second going to our constant velocity equation, plugging in our values, and we get 0.33 seconds. So what that tells us is that at 0.33 seconds, we just traveled 9 meters. So now let's go ahead and throw that into the y-axis, and let's go ahead and use our givens v, i, y, g, y, and t. Let's find something that has an acceleration equation that has those givens so that we can solve for y. And we find one that's going to be y equals v, i, t plus 1 half g, t squared. We plug in our values. We have our, our 12.7. Once again, this is no longer zero. We have 12.7 because it started going up for 33 seconds plus 1 half times. Once again, negative 10 because it's going downwards. And then for 0.33 seconds, once again, don't forget the squared, only the t gets squared. We plug in all our values and we find out that at 8, 9 meters down range, our ball is going to be 3.65 meters above the ground. So that's what we found out. And all we have to do now is just subtract. We're going to be above that 2.44. And we just figure out how much by subtracting the 2.44 from it. And so 9 meters down range, we are 1.21 meters across uh, above the crossbar. So that's just an example of how you do some of these problems. There's many different types of um, angular projectile motion problems. They can give you information about the end. So there's a lot of different ways you, you can go about these. You just have to think through your, your knowns, know that the x is going to be the same, and then just think about, okay, is there something that you can assume based on the way the problem is?